Friday, you are going to the border. Uh, immigration is complicated. One of the issues is an economic one. And no one is eating cats and dogs in Springfield, Ohio, and I'm glad not to be talking about that. But there are people there that are stressed, that feel that they're at capacity. Communities around the country that have legal immigration, many have said, we're, we're, we're at capacity. And many feel like the government has said to them, well, adapt, sit down, be quiet, this is how it is. What would a Harris administration do for those communities who've taken in many, many legal immigrants but are at capacity? Well, first of all, we do have a broken immigration system mm -hmm. and it needs to be fixed. And if we take a step back, months ago, some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress came together with others, proposed a border security bill. That would have put 1,500 new border agents on the border to help those hardworking border agents who are there right now working around the clock. Would have put more money into stemming the flow of fentanyl, which is killing Americans around our country and devastating communities. Would have put more resources into our ability to prosecute transnational criminal organizations, which in my career I've prosecuted. Donald Trump got word of the bill realized it was going to fix a problem he wanted to run on and told him to kill the bill, don't put it up for a vote. He killed a bill that would have actually been a solution because he wants to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And that's part of what needs to be addressed. And my pledge is that when elected president, if the American people will have me, I will bring that bill back and I will sign it into law. And we need a comprehensive plan. That includes what we need to do to fortify not only our border, but deal with the fact that we also need to create pathways for people to earn citizenship. Then I want to just ask you about a little job and a big job. Okay. What? Okay. So the question was, how do you fix these communities that say that they are overwhelmed and they are already full? Now, I'm going to give you the true answer versus the answer that she she provided here because she's giving the same talking points instead of answering the questions. And all throughout this interview, there was a dodge and deflection versus answering the question. A dodge and deflection instead of answering the question. Now, immigration system is broken, but the laws are on the books and it's not the system that's broken. It's not the laws that are broken. It's the fact that they are intentionally, intentionally. You can't tell me that a couple months ago or a few months ago, which is what she's basically saying, months ago, they've been in office for over three and a half years. Months ago, they proposed a border security bill, which by the way, which by the way, did not stem the flow of migrants into the country in hindsight, but let me go ahead and give you the insight for those of you that want to be informed versus those of you that just want to listen to silly talking points and then regurgitate them to, like they fact. All right. So this is what really happened. If you go and look up the laws that's on the books, such as the parole program, let me go ahead and pull it up for y'all. According to the immigration council research.org, and I'll go ahead and pull this up on the screen for you guys just so you can have a reference point and a fact sheet, okay? Uh, let me see if I can get this up for you guys really quickly. This is what it looks like, okay? Before the end of, so the bipartisan border deal was implemented or was drafted at the end of 2023 going into 2024, okay? That's number one. On January 5th, 2023, way before that, because they seen this coming and we wanted to continue to have this fund for proxy wars, what was a part of that bill was addressing funding because they wanted additional funding to continue to fund these proxy wars, including in Ukraine, Israel, and then the CHIPS war over in Taiwan. So what the Biden administration did was announce its intent according to what's right here intent to provide safe and orderly pathways to the United States. Now remember, dates, January 5th, 2023. This was published October 31st, 2023. Uh, safe and orderly pathways to the United States for up to 30,000 nationals of Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. The new pro program formerly known as the Processes for Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, 
and Venezuelans. It's called the CHNB, okay? Allows for certain people from these four countries to come over here to live and work lawfully using a legal mechanism called the humanitarian parole. Let's go down. What is humanitarian parole? Immigration and Nationality Act uh, grants the Department of Homeland Security, so it's all, it's all contained within one thing, the discretion to temporarily allow certain non-U.S. citizens to enter the United States or remain in the United States if they apply for admission but lack any legal basis. Individuals who enter the United States under these conditions are granted parole. Humanitarian parole does not provide any permanent pathway to remain in the United States and can be revoked. If you want to go down further, it says DHS may grant parole if there is an urgent humanitarian or significant benefit, public benefit reasons for doing so. Here's the kicker, all right? The INA, which is the Immigration and Nationality Act. Y'all never even heard of this, have y'all? It's on the books. The INA does not define what constitutes an urgent humanitarian or significant public benefit reason, but it uses the USCIS states, but USCIS states that an urgent humanitarian reason might include protection against targeted or individualized harm. Individuals who are not eligible for admission into the United States, but who can demonstrate an urgent humanitarian reason for being allowed to enter or stay in the country may be granted humanitarian parole. In creating the CHNV Humanitarian Parole Program, the Biden administration invoked both grounds for parole, arguing that, that the programs provide a significant public benefit for the United States by reducing unauthorized entries at our southwest border while addressing the humanitarian reasons causing people to flee those four countries. Let's go up, because we skipped a part. Humanitarian parole does not provide a permanent pathway and remain in the United States, but can be revoked and not renewed should the DHS, Department of Homeland Security, decide, which is ran by Mayorkas, decide that it is no longer warranted or, benefic or the beneficiary violates the constitutional conditions of the parole. So you're telling me they have control over who comes over here. They have control over who comes over here. And they can determine who is and who shouldn't, and it's left up to the determination of the United States of America or the administration that implemented the act and Homeland Security as to who it is that can and can't be here. So, number one, they then said, okay, well, we stem the flow of migrants into the country as of June of this year, of 2024, after 2023. But what they didn't tell you was that this act was passed in early 2023, which was one of the reasons why we still fly in millions of illegal migrants over into this country. And then they just appear in Springfield, Ohio, to the tune of 20,000 with a town that already had 40,000 people there. So now they got a population of 60,000. And one third of that is Haitian migrants. And you wondered how they got there when they then closed off the border and they stemmed, didn't stop stem the flow of migrants into the country. So when Donald Trump says, well, they're flying them in, and when this reporter asks the question and say, how can you deal with these, these people, which is, it, it hasn't been debunked, right? As far as eating different things or whatever. But when they say, how can you help these people that say that they overwhelmed, why would they help a problem that they create? According to the documentation, that we're reading right here that's readily available for everybody, but they know that if you want to hide something from somebody, then hide it in a book or hide it in some inf information. Hide it in a place where they're not looking. You didn't vote on that. That's not something that they raised. That's something that they gave you, and they still flying them in, but then we want to sit here and say, well, it's Trump's fault. No, 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 no. Y'all sued Texas to open up the border to allow illegal migrants still into this country. And I believe... I believe, I can't substantiate, I believe that one of the reasons that Eric Adams is catching hell right now is because he no longer wanted to play ball. So that's why it's so difficult for them to answer the question for the problem that they created. And then maybe they'll even be your savior.
or endear themselves to a new demographic of voters that then can help them maintain power. I love you. I appreciate you. I want to hear what y'all got to say. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon link is in the description. Also, shout out to Tej Hanley, 40% off your first order, 20% off for life. I rock with you, Tej. And then last but not least, make sure y'all come and kick it with me in person on Let's Rant About It. I'm going to be in Atlanta on November 2nd and Detroit on December 14th. Get your tickets, discount code Anton, and let's go and have a good time. Let me know what y'all think inside of the comments.